Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. And so for today's video, I'm going to just be playing with some new products that I picked up, some that are new, 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 and some that are just new to me. So I'm going to be having a try of this brand new primer from Tom Ford. I have the Pat McGrath Bridgerton palette finally in my pores. I have the Pesh Rose blush from Chanel that I've been dying to try as well as the Rouge Coco Balm and the new number one foundation from Chanel. So if you are interested in these products and my thoughts and you want to see how I get on with them, then keep watching. So I'm gonna start off with eyes and this bad boy to begin with. I've tried to hype myself up about it because I know I said in my haul video, I've kind of just lost my excitement for it because it just took so long to get here but I'm trying to refine the excitement because it's she's here now so we, we have to let these things go. So I'm going to start off with this shade up here and this is my Refer 16 brush and I'm just going to give a sort of light little wash of this all in the crease. I just I don't really want this to come out super pink. I understand it's <laughs> there's going to be some pink happening, but I'd rather a sort of softer bit of pink as opposed to a really bright fuchsia look today. It's just what I'm feeling. This is a bit of a sort of satin shade, this one, so it's not super shimmery. You can absolutely use it in the crease. That's blended nicely. And it is a nice soft pink, so I don't feel like it's too, too much, too fuchsia too bright. This is the only thing I picked up from the Bridgerton co collection. I just didn't really feel that excited about anything else. The blush palette, obviously the blushes are permanent. I already have all the shades of the blush that I want. I didn't want the shades that were in that palette. So that was an easy pass. The highlight, I was kind of tempted by the highlight, but I have three highlights now from Pat McGrath and I feel that that would have been my least favourite of them all. So I'm kind of still, I don't know, it's possible if it came to Selfridges, I would pick it up, but I have no desire to go back and shop from the Pat McGrath website at this point. I'm kind of hoping it's, you know, some while before there's anything I want to buy from the brand again, because I'm just, I'm pretty sick and tired of that website and the delivery times at this point. I do not understand why they are the only brand, the only brand who cannot get their delivery resolved. I don't understand it. Like what problem are they having that the rest of the world just doesn't have? Next, I'm gonna use this matte shade down here. But if you can kind of shed any light, I mean, I was talking, I was ranting to my husband about it. He obviously cares not about makeup, but he just has to listen to a lot of makeup related rants and discussions these days, as you can imagine. And he just thinks, well, they obviously don't care. You know, they don't need your money. They don't really care about like customer service or their delivery. They're just not bothered about it. And perhaps it's more expensive for them to pay for like better shipping or whatever. But I just don't, I mean, obviously they don't care that much because they would have resolved it. But I just don't know any brand, like what brand would want this reputation, this like really bad, embarrassing reputation for terrible like customer service essentially. I don't understand like what brand wouldn't want to resolve this. I don't believe they don't care and they don't want to resolve it because I just don't know who would want this like reputation and this just really, it, it is embarrassing. It's embarrassing to me. Like if you look at the comment section of their social media, like no one's gonna want that to be the representation of their brand. I feel like they must want to improve it, but I also don't know how or why it was so complicated to do that or why it's taking so long because this has been an issue for years. It's never made any real headway as far as improving it. So I'm just really building this shade to give us some depth. It's really, this is a lovely, this is definitely the shade I was kind of like, caught by when I opened it I was like oh this looks pretty this kind of looks like something I don't have from the brand this color so yeah this is kind of the one that I wanted to definitely incorporate into today's look and I guess you kind of have to because it is the only matte in the palette well you don't have to you do whatever you like but I have to because I just need the mattes I need them 
by the way, I cleaned my, it's now slightly, you know, I've just used it again, but I cleaned my Sonia G makeup cleaning cloth yesterday. Very proud of it. Very proud. Very clean. I really struggle to bring myself to wash it because I, I, it's one of these items that I just really never thought was necessary or needed. And now I cannot do my makeup without it. And so washing it is like problematic because I need it and I cannot live without it. So I have to wait until I've got a few days where I don't plan to do makeup. And I didn't wear makeup all weekend this weekend. Didn't feel like it, wasn't in the mood. Gave myself, my skin, a few days of no makeup. Hence why we hit Monday and I was like, I need to try these products that have just been sitting desperately saying, please try me, ma'am. Try me, I'm here now, hello. And you guys have been desperately asking me how the Chanel blush looks on my skin and I don't know because I haven't tried it yet. Mm. So next, another shade I am quite excited about was this lovely, pretty rose mauve type of shimmer. Oh, that is pretty. Oh, that's pretty. I don't even know if I'm gonna use the blue today because I feel like every single look I've seen with this palette, obviously people are using the blue because that is like the pop shade in the palette. So of course you're kind of expected to show, you know, is that worth getting excited about? But this is like much more my kind of makeup, my cup of tea, this kind of soft, pretty, romantic, mauve shades. Like this is how I would prefer my makeup. That's such a pretty shade. So far, I am kind of liking this more than I thought. I don't know where to put the blue because it looks quite blue in the pan, but from what I've seen, it swatches quite silver with like a hint of blue. I don't know where to put that in the inner corner or pat it over the top. Maybe I'll put this shade in this inner corner and then we'll pat that blue over the top just for the sake of using like every color in here because you know we are doing a review kind of i guess <laughs> who knows what we're doing do you know i don't know i don't know what i'm doing i don't know what's going on i was a bit confused this week because i knew what videos i wanted to film but i can't film some of them until later in the week until i've tested things out and i've got my thoughts together i can't film the rest of the videos i wanted to film so I didn't know what to do today, so I just randomly decided to start whacking all these products that have been sitting in my drawer on. And so I don't really know what's going on. I'm a bit befuddled, to be honest. So I'm just gonna whack this blue over the top. We don't know why, we don't know if this is going to work together as a look, but at least we get to see what the color looks like. So these sort of sheerer shimmers, these like special shades, they kind of take on a bit of what you put them on top of. So if you were to put this on top of a blue, it would look much more blue. If you were to put it on top of a sort of more neutral base, you probably wouldn't see as much of the blue pulling through. But this is, that was a poem, wasn't it? I'm getting a bit of fallout from that blue. But this is obviously going on top of those rosy shades. So you're kind of getting a hint of blue and it's almost taking on that rosy tinge. It's a very pretty blue, I love that. I like that blue a lot more than I thought I was going to. I think I thought it was gonna be a bit lackluster and not kind of as blue as I wanted it to be, but that's very pretty. Giving me the blue I was looking for and hoping for. I'm actually liking this palette more than I thought, which is nice, because having been like annoyed by how long it took to get here, at least I'm enjoying it now. It's actually here and on the eye more than I thought I would. That's super pretty. Very romantic, very Bridgerton. So moving on to primer, I picked up this Tom Ford Soft Matte Primer because I love all the Tom Ford foundations. I think they do base products very well. I know they've previously had, I think, an illuminating primer, which I have never tried, but I saw this one and I thought, Let's give it a go. It's got the exact same like twist up to a pump packaging as the soft matte foundation. So yeah, let's give this one a go. Standard 30 mil, one ounce. I've heard this kind of um, comes out, yeah, almost like a gel. So you can see that there, it looks very serum-like and that was my, oh, okay, hang on. Let's get another little pump there, two little pumps. So I've heard this kind of goes on like, oh, 
that smells divine. So it's supposed to go on like a serum, but then it dries down almost to like a powdered finish. So when I was reading it, I was thinking it's reminding me of like the technique of, you know, sort of putting some a dusting of loose powder down before foundation to control oil production that I know is a very popular trick for those of you with oilier skin types. That felt like no primer I've ever tried. That was weird. It felt like a serum. It feels so hydrating and cooling, but as I was applying it, it literally had the same feeling of when you're putting on a gorgeous, luscious, rich serum. Oh my God, my skin feels amazing. Like so, so refreshed and hydrated. Very, very cooling, fresh, but now it feels really smooth. So smooth. And there's definitely a bit of a sort of dulling down of the shine that my skin had prior to me ha like applying it. There was definitely a bit of a glow to my skin from like my skincare and things. So that has definitely toned down to like a sort of soft natural finish. No pilling, no nothing. Oh, that feels silky. I'm just going to give that a moment and put on some of my mascara while well, that has a chance to sink in. This is the order I usually do my makeup. I'll do my eyes, apply my primer, coat of mascara while I just give the primer a second to do its thing. And then I go back in with foundation. I've been very excited to try the new YSL Lash Clash Mascara. That looks like right up my street. It's not quite available here, but yet. But I've been checking the website and at the moment it's got like a giveaway competition for the mascara and it just says coming soon. So I think it's gonna be here any day. So hopefully I can give that one a whirl very soon. But until then, this is still it for me when it comes to mascara. The good old Charlotte Tilbury, still my fave. A few moments later. So the product that I'm like the most excited for to try in this whole video is the Chanel number one foundation. I really wasn't excited for this until I started watching reviews. Like I wasn't gonna buy this, I wasn't gonna review it. I just sort of thought it was an easy pass for me. It just kind of looked very average. I've not been hugely excited for Chanel foundations in the past. So yeah, it was kind of like a, okay. And then I started watching reviews and thought, okay, I need to try this. So yeah, I picked up the shade BD41. I am obviously in my palest of pale skin tone at the moment. I thought that was gonna be really light, but it's, I think it'll be fine for now. It's perfect, in fact. Yeah, perfect, in fact. That is ideal winter skin tone shade for anyone who's a winter twinsy. I've never worked out my Chanel winter shade before when I, I've only owned one other Chanel foundation and it was in my summer skin tone, which was I think BD51 or B51. I can't remember if it had a D in it or not. Who knows? But it was the 51. So I was a bit like, hmm, I was trying to guess. When did I buy that? How deep into summer were we? And how much lighter do I need to go? So I thought if we go a shade lighter, maybe, or a number, a 10 lighter, then maybe that will be enough because obviously, although it is winter, you know, we're rapidly approaching February. Come March, my skin tone starts to pick up color just as we have some sunny days here. We have some sleeveless events, days when we can go out without three layers and my skin picks up the sun like nobody's business. So I don't wanna buy a foundation I can't use in a couple of months time if I'm gonna love it, but at the same time I want it to match me now. So. This is the predicament we have. Let me just tell you, this is going on like silk. I did a very thin layer. This is definitely one that could give you a light coverage. Like this is definitely pretty much a light coverage right now. Like you can still see skin, discoloration, redness. It looks so smooth. I need to try this primer with other foundations because my skin felt so smooth. And obviously today I'm breaking my own rule of trying like two new like base products 
together. So I don't know if this is the combination of the primer with this foundation or it's the primer that is doing this or it's this foundation that is doing this. And this is why you try one new thing at a time, okay? But the combination here, whatever is going on, I mean, I don't necessarily think like primers are miraculous products. I don't think they turn a terrible foundation into a great one. I think they give you a bit of help, particularly if you have a specific skin concern. So for example, if you have a very oily skin type, a mattifying primer can make a big difference to how your makeup wears. Or if you have a very dry skin type, a really hydrating primer can give you, you know, much less drying throughout the day. So I do think that they have like jobs that they can do very well. But I think when you have a normal skin type like me, without a specific concern that you want your primer to combat, they make a difference. They can make makeup last better. They can make a difference to how like foundation sits on the skin and how all of those things, like the Tatcha Silk Canvas, I find it gives my skin a lovely fresh look to it and it makes my makeup last longer. This is like the best I remember my skin looking. Like it looks so natural and like flawless, so smooth, like the smoothest I remember my skin looking. It is smooth, 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 smoothity smooth. Like very nice. I want to keep putting more on. We don't know why. I'm just enjoying it, I'm having a nice time. I meant to say, I feel like I gasped at the smell of the Tom Ford primer and then I gave you no further information. So it doesn't smell like perfume, It's it smells like skincare, but a, an active skincare, does that make any sense? It doesn't just feel, smell like a light floral smell, it smells like, um, maybe like a potent, a potent citrusy skincare scent. So it was quite strong, but it, yeah, a serum, I guess, a, a sort of really strong, potent serum, but the scent as it was going on, completely gone, can't smell it at all now. And this foundation, same thing, when I opened it and pumped it out, I could definitely get the typical Chanel fragrance from it, but as I'm applying it, I'm not noticing that at all, but it certainly has a fragrance, let's say that. It has definitely gone, pretty much gone now. So yeah, I just wanted to see what can we get coverage wise here. Definitely, I'd say at a medium, this is probably the limit. I'd say a medium, a light to medium is what is kind of achievable with this foundation. The first sort of light coat that I did was, definitely more of a light, very natural coverage. And now we're at a medium, which was, took a fair bit of building, but we can get there, we can get there. I'd say the majority of my redness is now banished. Very nice, even, very fresh, healthy, glow luminosity to the skin. Very even, just so smooth, so, so smooth, so smooth. I don't know, definitely don't drink every time I say smooth because <clears throat> you will die. So we need to move on. We need to let the foundation do its thing. I'm just gonna pop some of my Pat McGrath concealer where it goes. I'm not gonna do a wear test as such, but I will, as usual, report back in the comment section. Today is a perfect day, actually, for me, as good as it gets in the winter for me to test a foundation and how it's wearing because we have swimming later. And there's really no better environment to test a foundation I found than a swimming pool, particularly in winter because they there's just all manner of things going on. One, we wear masks at the pool, not in the swimming pool, I'm not going swimming, I just wanna make that clear. <laughs> I'm not that weird but we wear masks while watching our children's swimming lessons. And it's flipping hotter than the sun, and then we come out and it's much colder than the sun. What's the equivalent saying? Colder than the moon? <laughs> Where's cold? So there's a lot of changing environments, hot, cold, mask on, mask off, 
in the car with the heating on, etc. And I feel like that's a good few hours, you know, at the end of the day to just try and test a foundation. I'm also going to go to the gym in a bit, but I'm not like I don't do cardio. So it's not like I'm going to be sweating buckets. That's a little unfair. That's almost the other way. Like that's a bit too much for most foundations. But I do go and lift weights and, you know, Although I don't get sweaty as such lifting weights, I definitely get a bit of a glow on. So again, this foundation is going to have a bit of a workout of its own today. And I will let you know in the comments how it's doing. But I will keep trying both the primer and the foundation on their own. Not on their own, with my normal products. And see actually how they're getting on by themselves and with other new friends. So this isn't really a new product, but I did pick up a new shade of the Victoria Beckham bronzer this is my favorite without doubt bronzer these days and this is a better shade for me in these cooler winter months I have found I have shade four which I love in the summer and I can still wear it in the winter but I do have to go a little careful a little easy a little gentle don't get too carried away whereas with this shade I don't have to worry I can get my brush in there you know I can build it up and it's a little safer when I'm a little fairer in the winter than shade four. It's just the most natural, beautiful finish. I love the undertones, both shades. I mean, they are quite different. I'd say this is a more classic warm tone shade three, whereas shade four has the red that I kind of need to replicate my natural undertones as I tan in the summer. So I think both of these have gorgeous natural undertones to them and just the most silky natural formula finish. Love it. I like to apply like a lot of bronzer and then buff to get a better blend, especially around the forehead. So I don't end up with helmet head. Although, you know, sometimes I end up with that anyway, but who's to care not i all is going beautifully on top of the chanel foundation i did not set it and i'm not being gentle even i'm just a law unto myself today i'm just going in and i don't care who knows it yeah i wasn't gentle i was going ham with that bronzer and nothing is lifting it doesn't feel it feels mm, it does have some tack left to it you know but when i was applying that bronzer you wouldn't know it just felt like it was set I'm just going back into that matte shade from the Bridgerton palette to finish off these peepers. I think it might be nice to put a bit of that blue in the inner corner. What do you think? Should we do it? See what happens. Ooh. I like it. So I just did another coat of mascara. Now, normally I would put highlighter on now, like I usually put highlight and then I finish with blush, but I just want to see the finish of the Chanel blush before I, without highlight, I don't want, I want to see what's glow is coming from this blush as opposed to what's coming from my highlight. Do you see what I mean? Here she is. I have high hopes. I wasn't 100% sure if it was going to show up on my skin tone, uh, just based on swatches and other people's reviews and things. But having swatched it now, I'm pretty confident building up. It will be lovely and subtle, which is exactly what I was hoping the blush would be. There's really like no kick up happening and I'm swirling because I'm anticipating it needing a lot. It really, I can't smell anything from this blush, you know, which was surprising for me because I feel like Chanel blushes are always really strongly fragranced and this one, unless I've got COVID, can anyone else smell? No, I can smell my perfume. It's not that. <laughs> the paranoia. Okay, okay. So it's subtle. That was a sort of heavy but one layer application and it's just very soft and subtle, but it's definitely there. I'm going to build up and see. I mean, we can get all that I kind of need and want from it and was expecting from it. A very soft, subtle 
peachy blush kind of in the same ballpark as like Bellini by the way I posted a ton of comparison swatches on my Instagram of this blush with a load of other peachy blushes that I own uh, for anyone interested in finding out whether you have something similar already go and check that out but this is exactly what I was kind of hoping for and expecting from this blush just a really natural soft blush perfect it seems to have like a subtle luminosity to it there's no glitter it's not shimmery it's a very subtle natural luminous finish very nice like very nice exactly what I was kind of expecting but yeah I think definitely better I was just about to dip my brush in here thinking it was the blush imagine what could have happened then can tell it's Monday you can tell it's Monday but yeah it's definitely on the subtle side definitely I'd say lends itself to a fair to medium skin tone any more than that and I think you're not gonna get much blush going on which is acceptable because the other blush in this collection is definitely much deeper so I think you know there's kind of a blush for a medium to deep skin tone and there's a blush for a fair to medium skin tone which is kind of you know all we flipping ask for we ask for a couple of options for different skin tones so it's nice to see that I don't need them both to work for me one is good so now I'm just going to whack some of my Hermes highlight on still one of my absolute fives very nice and natural nice subtle glow to the skin is what we like from monday pretty and last i think but not least the one of the balms that i picked up from the same collection as the blush the mediterranean collection am i right am i wrong who knows this is the shade 914 natural charm i might just wipe my lips a little because I feel with these sheerer lip formulas, if you've got foundation on your lips, then you're not really helping them as far as pigment and as far as color. They're just gonna kind of take on the color of the foundation. So I always try to wipe before I go in with these sheerer formulas. Why can I not stop smelling everything? It doesn't smell of anything. I don't know why I did that. I'm a sniffer, what can I say? So this is exactly as described and as other people have been describing in their reviews to me. It's like, it feels very much like a balm. A, it's, it feels thin, it doesn't have much creaminess or heaviness to it. It's a probably a light medium amount of coverage. It had a nice amount of color, but I did use a, a lot of swipes and a lot of building up. It feels very comfortable and nice and soft on the skin like the perfect easy going throw in your handbag for like a your lips but better kind of product and it feels very very light and nice on the lips very comfortable so yeah probably pretty much as what I was expecting so here is a little close up for you on all of these products still no sinking into smile lines by the way on this foundation so oh, that is a good sign looking really nice on the forehead on my lines there as well let's give you a little sneaky peek of these peepers as well while we're here nice close up on the eyes and as you can see it's super subtle with that blush super subtle and soft lovely okay so there you have it so let's give you my little rundown on these products that i tried today starting off with the pat mcgrath bridgerton palette i liked this much more than i thought i was going to well here's the thing i loved the packaging and the color story in here when i first saw it but like i said in my haul video i definitely lost the excitement for it because it took nearly a month to arrive and I haven't even bothered you know it's been in my home almost a week and I hadn't even tried it yet that's kind of how 
much I lost my excitement for it. But actually playing with it today and using it on the eyes, I really look, I really like the look that I came up with. All of the shadows performed beautifully as Pat McGrath shadows almost always do. They were very pretty, blended very beautifully. I think everything goes together beautifully. And I think I was a little nervous it was gonna to be too colorful and too much, but I used pretty much every shadow in here. The only one I didn't use is this one down here. And I really like the look. It's not super crazy over the top, too colorful for like my comfort zone and what I like. I really enjoy it. And I think you could get, you know, with skip the blue and this would have been a very soft, pretty, everyday look for the office or whatever. If you're a bit more of a color wimp like me, then you don't have to use the blue in here and it's gonna be a very, very pretty palette for every day. But I think it's just very pretty, very soft and lovely. And I really like the formula. So it's definitely kind of come back up in how much, how good I feel about it, which is nice given that I waited so long that I actually enjoyed it. So that was great. This primer, I didn't have necessarily, I don't know if I had high or low expectations. I just had expectations. They were neither high nor low, but I am very excited about this primer. I loved the feel of it going on. Even now my skin, which again is annoying. I'm annoying because I tried two new base products. So I'm not really sure what's doing what, okay? But this felt gorgeous to go on. I love the packaging. I think it's very nice and chic. I love the little pump. I love the amount that it pumps out. I loved how it went on the skin, the feel that it gave me. It felt so hydrating and fresh. And then as it dried down and settled into the skin, it felt smoother than a baby's bum. It felt so smooth and silky, gorgeous. I really enjoyed it. I think it felt lovely. I liked the fresh smell and it was just a joy to apply. And as for this foundation, it looks gorgeous. It's so smooth. That is the word. It's smooth, flawless, fresh, natural, light. Love it, love the shade that I got. It doesn't have super ridiculous over the top, way too warm undertones or anything like that. I think it's just a nice balanced shade. So yeah, I'm, I've am i really high hopes. I'll go, I'm gonna keep trying this one. I'm gonna see how it wears today. But as far as how it looks now on the skin, I think it's beautiful. But yes, I did commit a terrible sin today as far as when you're trying new products in that I changed two variables. But over the course of the next week or so, I will try, you know, the primer with my regular foundations and the foundation with my regular primer and then we can kind of see what is actually making this magical outcome is it the primer is it the foundation is it both is it neither I mean it's it's got to be one of them it's got to be one or the other it's not just my face so I will report back. Certainly I know that I loved this before the foundation went on. It felt lovely and it looked fantastic and it felt very smooth and it felt like a fantastic base for foundation because it had that set smooth. Doesn't feel powdery, but it does feel set a, like feel to it. So I definitely think the primer has a lot going for it. It's just whether the finish of this foundation and that amazing immaculate smooth quality came from the foundation or the primer or the combo wheel. That's what we're going to keep testing for. The foundation, as I said, love it so far. We'll let you know how it wears. We'll keep on trying it over the next week and I'll update you on those products and how they're getting on with other partners in my monthly phase and fails video. The Rouge Cocoa Balm, it's nice. It's a tinted lip balm product. I don't think you need them. It's certainly nothing special. My favorite of these types of formulas is the Charlotte Tilbury Superstar Lips. I don't like this as much as that. That Those are much shinier. This is kind of, it's got a glow and a luminosity to the lips. It's a very light, comfortable formula. It doesn't knock my socks off. It's, it's not giving me anything like special that I want to go back and buy 10 more. It just seems like a pretty average one of these types of products of which there are very many and I'm sure you already have lots. They, it, there's nothing super special about it. I like it, I like the color. 
feels nice. But yeah, they, these products, there's just so many of them and it doesn't stand out for me. And everything else I used today, it wasn't so new. So you already know my thoughts on those. And so I guess this is where I leave you. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye.